yeah. So thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Daniela Rosario. You can see my hashtag on Twitter there. Uh, I work uh, in a company in Italy called Webble. Uh, we do custom client works from websites to custom integrations. We, do we also do mobile apps. Uh, you probably know us also from zoolenders.com. We do extensions for Zoo. And just Friday, we launched a new service called Joomla Commander, which is a uh, monitoring, um, updating, and backupping remote solution for Joomla from a single dashboard as a software as a service um, website. Uh, enough marketing. Uh, let's go into the presentation. Uh, I have some excuses to make, like the keynote this yesterday from Laura. Uh, I plan to have a big, huge presentation with nice slides and all of that, but work came in the way. So I, just, I was just able to uh, do some uh, real world examples and a couple of slides, and the rest is just, you know, see the code and see how it, what it does, and try to share what I, what I found during my research on WebSockets in PHP. Oh, it's dead. Thank you. So, um, <coughs> real-time Joomla websites. Um, you might know that uh, recently uh, the big thing is uh, real-time and web sockets. So, all the new applications from Facebook to every new software as a service thing you, you found on the internet is doing real-time. So, you don't ever need to refresh the page to see what's changed in the meantime the server just uh, alerts you automatically uh, without you having to do anything on the page. So that's the real new thing. It's also very good for user experience, as you might you know, uh, see, because uh, the user don't, doesn't have to do anything. Even if he, if he, if he leaves his page open, uh, he still gets every single information he needs. Uh, and uh, you are the one providing the user with the right information every time. It's also very good for analytics, you know, uh, aggregated data, because you, you can do real-time uh, um, graphs or, or statistics on your page. So I started investigating how that could be uh, placed inside our Joomla website. And uh, because, you know, uh, usually the real-time things are done in other languages like Node.js or, or similar things, uh, but PHP wasn't actually on very good on that, so I started researching how to do uh, WebSocket in PHP and in this particular case in Joomla. So first thing, I just want to do a quick uh, overview of what web WebSockets are and why they are so good and doing what they do. So first thing first, the current, uh, the, the, the usual connection you do with your Joomla website or with any PHP website or any website at all on the, inter on the internet are done through HTTP, as you might guess, uh, which is a, a protocol that uh, runs over TCP or UDP, usually, usually TCP. Uh, uh, they, let's see if this work. Yeah, it's a stateless protocol. It means that once uh, you connect to something, uh, send data, retrieve data, and then the connection closes. So every time you want to get something new, you have to open a new connection, uh, send new data, get new data, and then close the connection again. So as you might realize, uh, there is a lot of overhead going on because every time you want to get something new or updates or whatever, you lose milliseconds connecting and disconnecting from the network, which on mobiles especially takes a long time. So uh, you may lose like half a second every time you get something because you are on a slow connection or a very long, you have a very high ping. So it, it's, it's something bad. So this is a classic, uh, you know, workflow of an HTTP connection. You connect, send that data, receive data, and close the connection. And you go through the loop every time again. Uh, it's great for accessing resources like images, CSS files, JavaScripts, and all of that. But it's pretty bad for uh, streams, so high amount of data and continuous transmissions. 
So it's not good for real-time communication. So it's not good for, let's say, a, a phone call or uh, a chat application because uh, once you disconnect, you cannot receive any more data from the server. S but it's very easy to implement because you don't have to deal with long polling connection queues or things like that. Uh, on I'm sorry, I think I miss this should be web sockets. I went behind. Yeah, it was back around. Okay, web sockets. They also run over TCP, so it's the same base network thing, but they are a full duplex protocol. Full duplex means that you can send and receive data through the same connection at the same time. So even if you are sending data, the server can reply to you with data even if you are still sending. So you have two channels open at the same time always. It's dedicated for the web, so it's not some other technology like a normal TCP local connection. It's just for web. And it bases itself on an HTTP connection. So you first do an HTTP connection and then it upgrades itself to a WebSocket if the WebSocket is available. And, and its protocol uh, prefix is WebSocket or WebSocket Secure if you want to do like um, secure encrypted connection over, over WebSocket. It has a very small footprint. By footprint, I mean extra data passed around to, uh, to just do the network things. Just has a little header for each package, and that's it. The rest is all your data. So it's very good for um, you know, a small bandwidth system like mobile connections, because you don't, say you don't send a huge amount of extra data. You just send what you want and what you need. And it works like an open connection. So once you connect, it stays open until you say close the connection or until the connection drops for some reason, like you, lo you lose the network or the other person disconnects or whatever. So it's very good for uh, uh, emi uh, event emitting things because one, uh, whenever you, you have to say something, you just emit a signal and that signal is immediately transmitted to the other person which is listen f listening for your uh, events. Like in JavaScript you do with jQuery or something like that. Uh, it's the same concept, it's based on, in eva uh, based on events. It's ideal for real-time communication. So that's, this is the basis for any real-time communication over the web. So let's go into the real uh, use case for, for our world. So how we can do WebSocket in PHP? Well, uh, you cannot use that on a normal, let's say, Apache uh, or a normal hosting because um, you need to have a WebSocket server running on the machine and that needs to be fired up by PHP itself. So it's like a common line application written in PHP that listens for connections. It's not just a PHP file you put on your web hosting and uh, access it through your web URL. So it's not so simple to do with the current things, but it can, it can be done quite easily. I tried it, it <coughs> works. It, as I said, it can run upon a web server. It, it needs to be the web server. And the cool thing is, is that there is a, let's call it the facto standard in PHP for WebSockets. So there is a big library that implements this so there is no need to rewrite the entire network uh, bad things. It's called Ratchet, uh, that's the URL. I don't know why they have a different name, the URL from, from the name of the package, whatever. Uh, but it's very good, it's um, PHP 5.3 plus compatible. Uh, it uses uh, namespaces and all those kind of things. And if you want, you can also use traits from PHP 5.4, so it's pretty uh, modern. And I tried to take that implementation and put it into a normal Joomla website and do some kind of things with it. So I, I'll show you later on uh, what, what I'm doing with it. So I'm using that library and it gets fired by the Joomla application command line class. So it works uh, just as any other CLI script you may want to go with Joomla. So 
some possible use cases for, for uh, WebSockets, especially in Joomla. Uh, I find, found out that you can use WebSockets for mainly two things. One is communicating between browsers. So you have, let's say, a ch classic example is a chat. You need user to communicate real time between various different browsers or uh, let's say uh, you want to do a real-time chat on your website. Uh, WebSockets are great for that. That's one thing. And the other big thing is communicating uh, from that's opposed, it's server to client. So let's say a server is, ru is running a background job, like a backup or you know, those long running tasks. It's great for the server to say something to the client without the client having to ask for it. So even if the client is not asking continuously for what's the status of the backup, what's the status of the backup? Uh, with WebSockets, you can, uh, you can avoid asking and let the server ping the client whenever you want, which is very good because it's less resource intensive and it's also easier to implement server side. You don't have to do those, you know, jQuery, Ajax, long polling things that every 10 seconds go to the, to the server and say, there is something new, there is something new, there is something new. With WebSockets, you can say just server, I have something new, client, take the new thing. And it's very, very cool. So uh, there are some uh, things you can do even if you can't run a WebSocket server on your machine because you are, I don't know, in a shared hosting, so you don't have a CLI, or your web host, web hosting company stops the, uh, blocks the port on which you want to run the WebSocket server. You still can use WebSocket. You just need to use a software as a service uh, web backend, like Pusher, or there are like 10 of them. This is the one I tried, it's very good. So they do the WebSocket for you, and you just connect and send messages using their APIs uh, without having to actually fire up a new PHP WebSocket server. So that's it for my slides. I warned you that the slides were much short. So what I want to do now, if it doesn't crash, is, is show you what I tried to do and what's actually possible uh, to achieve with WebSocket even in PHP. So um, first thing I want to show you, let's hope the session didn't expire. Uh, items. So what I he did here is create a new Joomla website. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, impressive so far. Yeah, impressive. Um, can I duplicate the screen without yeah. fucking up? Okay. So uh, preferences, sorry for that. Duplicating the screen, where the hell is it? Uh, yep. Uh, disposition, duplicated. Now it's a bit more impressive. Okay, so uh, this is a normal Joomla website, which I installed on my local machine, and I created a new CLI script. Uh, you can see it here, it's called websocket.php. I will be sh sharing this um, slide as it is called on GitHub at the end. Uh, sorry. Uh, how the hell do I hide the slide? Uh, hide sidebar. Where the hell is that? Import. Ah, sorry. Make KB. Okay. So what it does is simply the usual stuff to load Joomla. Then there is this session implementer, which simply uh, allows me to use the same session I use on the HTTP side of things, so on the normal Joomla installation, on the WebSocket. So if a user in Joomla uh, is logged in and uses a WebSocket, I'm, I can identify him through the WebSocket using the same session and share data through the session. Then I have this CLI application script which simply loads this, uh, the library I talked about before, the Ratchet um, WebSocket implementation, 
which is simply a while true loops. So it just continues to run and waits for connections from, from the web. And whenever uh, this loop runs, it goes through this uh, w WS application, which is a, a new application, I like a new class I've written that deals with incoming connections and incoming messages from the WebSocket. So to show you what happens is small screen. Okay, I constructed this new class which implements the message component interface from the Ratchet uh, implementation, does some constructing things, and then you have these methods. So you, it has on open, it's every time a new WebSocket connects to my WebSocket server calls this method. So what I'm doing, doing here is store the list of connections I have active on the website at the moment. So I, if I have 10 different browsers connecting to me through the WebSocket, it simply stores them. So I can later on uh, send messages to them independently based on what they are doing. And then uh, simply uh, has a on message and on close. So whenever a connection closes, do something. And whenever a message comes in, do something. So to show you the client side of things, I simply created a new view called items, just to be very original. And I re uh, I written this small script in JavaScript to connect to my WebSocket server, which I just fired up. So what it does is simply create a new WebSocket connection using the, the protocol we said before on my local machine, on the local port I used on the WebSocket server. And then I say whenever the connection opens so I it's able to connect to the WebSocket server, tell me. Then when I click the button start backup here, just send data through the open WebSocket, like in Ajax, with these options. And whenever the server contacts me back again, do this kind of thing, which is just update the progress bar, the, the, the progress bar. So what I did was uh, try to replicate what Akiba backup from Nicholas there does with his Ajax um, polling. So start, and then when the server comes back and tells me the, ser the backup is running, go on with the backup, go on with the backup, go on with the backup. And if the user closes the window with, with the Ajax way, the backup fails because it's the browser that keeps the backup going. With this method in, in WebSockets, uh, it's the WebSocket server that runs the backup. So even if the user actually closes the window, the backup keeps running because it's not done by the browser. The browser just sends the start signal. Everything else is done by the WebSocket server and the server contacts me back through the same socket telling me the backup is at, I don't know, 50% of, of, of completion. So just to show you, whenever I do this, it connects, connection established here. If you inspect the network, you see this, I don't know if you can see it, it's a get request and the status is 101, which is a very strange status. It, it simply means uh, I am a WebSocket server, you can upgrade your connection from HTTP to WebSocket. So if I inspect that, uh, you can see that the request was WS localhost and the response was switching protocols. So I, I'm switching from HTTP to WebSocket. And then what happens is that I have this connection open. So if you, if you go to the inspector, you see that's pending here, pending, because it's not open and close. It's always open up until I close it manually. So every, every data is sent through this WebSocket in frames, which is like packages. So it sends back and forth small packages of data that you can inspect through this network inspector in Chrome or in Firebug or whatever. So when I press start, 
back up and I switch this just to show you, you see they I sent a package through the WebSocket with this data. And now the server is pinging me back with the response. Let, let it finish so we can actually see what happens is that the server is replying me with this much, this many packages on the same socket connection without having to connect again through the HTTP. And even if I close it, the, s the backup still goes on. And that's very handy because you have a smaller uh, amount of data going on back and forth because you just transmit the data of the backup without uh, request parameters and extra payload of HTTP. And it's also faster because you don't have to connect and disconnect and connect and disconnect and connect and disconnect. So this was my first experiment. So you, I, I find it very good for lo long running tasks. If you have a long running task, instead of making it due to the web browser, let it do to, the, to a, you know, a cron job or something and the server pings back the, the client whenever it needs to, just to update the status of the request. Then I tried also to implement something different by uh, using the, using the uh, pusher um, APIs I talked to you about before, that cloud service. I wrote a different uh, application. Basically, I hacked Nicholas, uh, sorry, was uh, BKB, whatever. Okay. I took an already existing CLI script from Nicholas, which is Akiba Backup, which simply uh, from the CLI triggers a backup. And I wanted to just add the WebSocket connection to notify the browser whenever this script uh, does a backup without having the web browser itself to actually trigger the backup itself. So what I did is just, mm, sorry. Whenever uh, the backup ticks, so it proceeds to go on, I just call pusher and trigger uh, on the backup channel a step event with the data from the backup. And what happens is that if I'm connected right now, as you can see, to the pusher uh, APIs, as you can see, pusher is connected, and I launch my Akiba backup CLI script there using PHP CLI and click OK, it starts backing up me. And you notice that I didn't refresh the page to see this progress bar. It just appeared when my backup started and it will disappear when the backup ends. And so if the user was in Akiba backup, for example, just browsing through or just in his Joomla backend because he was you know, managing, managing his articles or whatever, uh, if the server started a new backup, it could have like a notification saying a new backup started. You want to see what's going on? Go there and see the progress bar or whatever. So it's very handy for, for this kind of communication. If the backups end, I can show you the last demo I prepared. Okay, so that's it. The last one was the browser-to-browser -browser communication. So I built a small, very original chat where, where you can, through multiple browsers, so this is one connection here. This is second connection. And as you notice, I'm logging in with a different user here. And I, on the same screen, with two different browsers and two different uh, users. When I hit here, hey there, and click send, as you see here, appear automatically the same message I sent. And the same thing happens whenever I do, 
hey to you. We are a chap. And click send here, it will send the message there. Uh, yeah, spaces, you know. This is Joomla. <laughs> yeah, who needs them? This is Joomla input filtering because I'm passing through Joomla to actually send. So these are the use cases I, uh, I found out to be more uh, most useful when dealing with WebSockets. Uh, and then I thought to generalize this into a single WebSocket server application to, be a, to let other uh, developers inject into the same web server. Because if Nicholas does his WebSock WebSocket web server in Joomla and then another developer wants to do the same thing, they would need to fire up two different WebSockets on diff servers on different ports and with all the strange things that could actually do. So I thought of having a single central WebSocket web server that deals with the connections and then just uh, relays the messages to the right component based on the type of message passed to the web server. So it's like the router Joomla has. So instead of going through HTTP, it goes through the WebSocket layer. And that's very simple thanks again to FOF by Nicholas. So I, I'm quoting you a lot today, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's your session. I actually paid me for, the, for this. And uh, what it does is KB. simply, uh, sorry, wrong file, app here. Whenever a new connection comes in, register the connection, whenever a message comes in, so whenever someone writes to a WebSocket from the browser or from another uh, whatever system that connects to the WebSocket server, it simply takes the message itself, which has to be JSON, uh, as an input object uh, and then pass it through a dispatcher in FOF. So if I want to connect to, let's say, comma kiba, I just have to build a, a JSON object with option comma kiba, view backup format JSON. What that does is go through this dispatcher here. The dispatcher finds option view and task and calls the correct Joomla uh, controller model view uh, classes and gets back the result here and pass it back and let the controller pass it back to the WebSocket. So for example, when, I take in a, when I'm taking a backup, what I'm doing is send a JSON string to comws view items task ws and these two other um, custom variables. So the package reaches the WebSocket web server, goes through the input, and then goes through the dispatcher, and magically, my normal uh, Joomla um, workflow is there. So I just keep developing the same way I'm developing normal Joomla components, but instead of having a GET request or a POST request, I'm having a simple <coughs> WebSocket request. So it goes to this controller, which is comws <laughs> items, and then I can write custom methods. And to access the web sockets, you can use this handy, very awful, uh, static, singletons, whatever you want to call them, uh, uh, methods to actually interact with a connection that triggered the, the message. So you, you can get the active connection which is the one that sent the message. And you can also get all the connections in the WebSocket at that moment. So you can get all the users that are currently attached to the WebSocket system. And then you can send data, for example. This is the chat method. So whenever a user hits send button, it, the, the, um, the browser send a message and the user. And, uh, and the Joomla relays them back to the remaining connections. So if I, if I uncomment this, basically I'm excluding the message from being relayed to the one who sent it. So if, I, if I'm chatting, I don't see my message 
it's only the other people sees my messages. Or whenever I'm taking a backup, oh, very original name, I should have called it backup, it loads the backup model in Akiba and simply runs the backup. And then whenever the backup ticks, I'm sending to each of the connected uh, sockets the result of the backup. So as you see, it's very similar to uh, what uh, you always do in, in a co common component, just with uh, special uh, data sending through the WebSocket. So that's how I see it implemented in, in a custom Joomla website. So that's it for me. If you have any questions, any doubt, yeah, Nicholas. Okay, this is a long discussion. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's say, let's say this. To uh, I'm standing up. So, uh, when you do web sockets, actually you are talking about different transport layers. So one of these is the actual web socket class, uh, but there are also like other seven methods, I think. Uh, through which you can do the same thing using the same method. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of socket.io. It's a very, is a very powerful and JavaScript library which deals with web sockets. And what it does is fall back on the different transports layer uh, based on the browser. So if you are on Chrome, which support web sockets, or on Firefox, or on Safari, or on Opera, the latest, Browsers, they all do web sockets with the only difference is the in the in encoding of the messages, but they do all support web sockets, natural connections. But if you are on <laughs> Internet Explorer, uh, whatever version, I think 11 has the web socket, I have to check, but I think the 11 version has the web sockets. But anything before, uh, you have something that goes from um, Flash. Uh, connection, so it, it's a Flash client that actually fires up a TCP connection as a WebSocket, or even long polling AJAX uh, queues. So it still goes through HTTP, but it's like recurring. So it, it's like a slow WebSocket. It's stupid, but you you can use it as a you know a fallback. But uh, if you are doing dashboard you can safely use web sockets because, I mean, you can exclude Internet Explorer and it's not that bad. As always, <laughs> so yes, but if, uh, if you're using Socket.io instead of pure new web socket, uh, you uh, can safely assume that it works on every browser. I mean, Joomla Commander is powered by web sockets and it runs on IE8+. Plus but it uses, I think, Flash Socket or something. Socket I use does that, so I don't know actually which kind of um, uh, type of protocol it does. So it could also be that your network, local network connection doesn't allow web sockets because it support 8080, whatever, and your firewall stops the connection, and it's smart enough to fall back to other type of connections to do the same thing. So that's basically what happens. Uh, in my example, I use pure uh, new WebSocket, which is an HTML5 specification, and that's, that works without any JavaScript library. You just type new WebSocket and it works. But the, the downside is you have to have a browser which has the WebSocket class. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as, as a... I think I showed that on the slide. Uh, you can use the SS, uh, and you can also use options on the constructor of the WebSocket. So when you do, uh, in JavaScript, when you do this here, new WebSocket, you, can, you have a second um, parameter, which is an object, and you can write, uh, I don't remember the actual name, but it's like this, should be like secure, true and this is encrypted communication okay. and but in the back end you have to do the, the encryption thing so you have to uh, 
the web's WebSocket server has to have a private key and a certificate, as you have in Apache, for example. You can use the same certificate, by the way. Okay. So um, it encrypts both, uh, the client encrypts the communication and server, certified with the same private key and works. Uh, that's how Joomla Commander does things. So even the WebSocket layer of communication is secured through the same certificate we use for the normal HTTP, HTTPS okay. connections. So, someone else? Well, thank you then, and thank you. I hope you will, you will try something like that.